Hello and welcome to Techspert Weekly, a sure type thing which sometimes includes vague, ill-informed comments about consumer technology and at least most definitely does happen every seven days, apart from when I can't be bothered to do one. And today's episode is sponsored by beer. Beer. So good it doesn't even need a slogan. But if it did have a slogan it would probably be, I love it in me. Coincidentally the same slogan as your mum. Ah. And now, some tech pish. Techspert Weekly. So the Pixel Fold 2, Google's second bendy blower, should be launching towards the back end of 2024. Just in time for you to stick it on your Christmas list and then harbour deep feelings of bitter resentment when Jolly St Nick brings you bath bombs instead. Thanks Santa, you merry old tosspot. But even though this admirably agile smartphone is likely to stay under wraps for another 8 months or so, we've already seen plenty of Pixel Fold 2 leaks, revealing more on the design, the specs and other bits, flexible or otherwise. Just last week, Android Authority managed to get its mitts on this photo of what is possibly a Pixel Fold 2 prototype. And if this cheeky snap doesn't turn out to be a festering bag of bowel evacuations, then you can see Google's design has changed considerably compared with the original Fold. Apparently the new model will be a lot more narrow than the old original Pixel Fold, so you can expect more similar dimensions to the likes of the OnePlus Open, this here Honor Magic V2 and other recent foldables. And if that's the case, it's a bit of a shame because I really like the unique squat design of the first Pixel Fold. That cover screen was easy-ish to use one-handed despite the phone being a full-on chongster. While this unconventional design also meant that the interior screen was well built for reading manga, which is great news for massive raging nerds like me. And that said, neither display was really ideal for watching movies on the Pixel Fold, with thick letterboxing to contend with no matter your choice. So Cinephile should prefer the fresh 2024 design as the cover panel will have a more appropriate aspect ratio. And it also appears from this here leaked image that Google is finally done with the horizontal camera bar that stretches edge to edge, opting again for a more conventional finish with those optics shoved away in a corner. I mean personally I'm just kind of hoping that the new Pixel Fold isn't quite as thick or as hefty as the original bad boy here. Compared to Honor's Magic V2 and some other recent foldables, Google's Bendy Wonder is a proper door wedge, prompting quite a common reaction. Is that a Pixel Fold in your pocket or are you just inappropriately aroused on this bus despite multiple lawsuits and a court order banning you from all public transport? But I gotta say, one of the biggest problems with the Pixel Fold is the software, which often is about as enjoyable as churning butter with your face. Quite a few Android apps still can't cope with the big screen and so you end up with enormous ugly pillars. And occasionally when an app does go full screen, you're left with big barren bits that look proper gash or the app just muffs up entirely. And I've seen plenty of other borky behaviour too, so frankly Google should just burn it all down and start again, preferably by just stealing the OnePlus Open setup which is refreshingly brilliant. And Android Authority also recently reported that the Pixel Fold 2 should be powered by the yet to be announced Tensor G4 chipset rather than Google's Tensor G3 which powered the old Pixel 8 blowers. Which of course you'd absolutely expect if this fresh new foldable wasn't launching until around the same time as the Pixel 9s at the end of the year. And a bit of G4 action is certainly good news because even though I was happy-ish with the Pixel 8 performance, it would be great to see a boost to the game and chops. And the original Pixel Fold's battery life could do with a proper boot up the arse as well. And apparently Google is rather generously stuffing 16 gigs of RAM into the Pixel Fold 2. That's four more than found in the original Pixel Foldable. So no doubt that'll really help with all of the inevitable AI type features bunged inside of it. Can't wait. And so far it's all been very quiet on the camera front beyond the fact that the Pixel Fold 2 might not have that full on bar action. It looks like we might get four sensors stuffed onto this early version at least. So presumably regular, ultra-wide and telephoto shooters. And possibly even another temperature sensor, just like the Pixel 8 Pro. I've got to say, I do find this incredibly helpful whenever I want to measure the temperature of my pants. Alright, verdict as usual, Scorchio. And another improvement I'd like to see for the Pixel Fold 2 is a brighter internal screen that's less reflective. So there's less squinting going on. But what about you? Which bits of the Pixel Fold do you reckon were particularly cack and deserve kicking right in the crotch? Certainly feel free to have a proper good gripe down in the comments. 
And speaking of which, now it's time for the part of the show that recently replaced waterboarding as the preferred method of extreme torture. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. So let's kick off this week with DLX Mimi, who simply says, fake. Are you saying that I'm fake? Like I'm an AI generated character or something? Because if that's true, frankly, I'm fuming they didn't give me more hair. And also a monocle. I always fancy seeing really well out of just the one eye. Uh, next box, Josh says, gin minis, you poor man. I just, I just really bloody can't stand gin. Like, I'll, I'll just never get it. I, back in the day, Sony took me and a bunch of us tech twats out to this ultra posh gin place. And I tried a gin that was, I think it was about 30 quid a glass or something outrageous. And frankly, it still tasted like dishwash and runoff. It's knocked it back, of course, and I'm not going to waste good booze, but the entire time I couldn't help but think, just give me that 30 quid, I'll go to Spoons and I'll get like 12 pints of bitter. Hyperplay RPG says, love it, Spurty, fairly new here, big Dominic Diamond-esque energy and a bonanza of booze handry and brass eye references. Please mention our channel, which is almost exclusively devoted to the R36S ultra budget handheld. I just have, sir. Hyperplay RPG for more of that shenanigans. Uh, it continues PS, wonder how you'll take the double D reference, Dominic Diamond. Always highly flattered to be compared to Mr. Diamond, that's for sure. I mean, basically, when I grew up, my face was pretty much glued to the teddy box, the likes of Dominic and Rick Meal and them, just absolute role models and heroes for me. Hence, obviously, I'm a potty mouthed ne'er do well who can't resist a double entendre. Uh, PPS, off camera, Mr. Motivator is the grumpiest, rudest man imaginable. I mean, if I had to pretend to be massively jolly while doing endless squat thrusts with all of that lycra wedged right up my arse crack and not even a sniff of a bacon sarnie or several pints to make it all worthwhile afterwards, the yeah, ad probably be pissed off as well. And next up, Cadaborific says, as a lifelong resident of Wolverhampton, fair. I mean, to be honest, I've only ever been to Wolverhampton the once, and just like that time when I jammed my fingers in the car door, I hope I learned my lesson. Etienne Sharp says, I'll step up with which crap celebrity do I sound like? With Jimmy Neal, Cheryl Watserface, Biffa Bacon, or basically any Geordie. Can't think of a famous Mackham, sorry. I mean, frankly, I wish I had the angelic voice of Jimmy Neal. Sir Jimmy Neal, surely by now. Ain't no doubt it's plain to see. Woman like you's no good for me. She's lying. Subsonic's Beatbox Tutorials says, I didn't know you could beatbox, man of culture and many talents. Uh, I, thanks. I mean, coming from someone with that username, that's, that's a massive compliment. Maybe I should bung it on my LinkedIn. Now, last week's topic was the Nintendo Switch 2, which hopefully should be launching towards the end of the year. In fact, we've had more confirmation than that seems to be the fact. But we've actually had a lot more comments about the Derwent Pencil Museum, of all things, which apparently a lot more people have been to than I certainly expected. So Deekabout says, We live not that far from the Pencil Museum, and you're right. Oh, and my wife is from Wolverhampton, you are right about that too. Fat Deku Scrub, not as impressed, says, You take back what you said about the Derwent Pencil Museum. And Neil Balcombe says, Back in the 80s, I went to the Derwent Pencil Museum on a wet and miserable day for a school trip. All I remember is the smell. Yeah, you know, like yourself, I'm pretty sure I went there on a rubbish school trip back in the day, but then I'm starting to think, is it one of those weird Inception-style moments where actually it's just a false memory? And to be honest, you know, Sunderland school trip, we were probably all getting absolutely loaded on the bus ride there, so who knows where we ended up. I had to squint at the TripAdvisor page to see if it sparked any memories, and I did enjoy some of the reviews. But well, this one might have even been from Neil. Despite all the negative reviews, it was still rubbish. We spent more time queuing it in the pouring rain outside than in the actual museum, and yet the rain was more fun. Another one-star review here. While staying in the South Lakes, we decided to drive 35 miles to visit the Pencil Museum. What a disappointment. 35 miles? I mean, frankly, I wouldn't cross the road for it. You know, if pencils are your thing, I'm sure you, you, you'll get a lot out of it. But uh, yeah, some of these reviews are awfully blunt. But anyway, this isn't f***ing pencil spurt, it's tech spurt. And we did actually have a couple of Nintendo Switch comments, so let's read those. Uh, so Greg Watto says, I'd say Nintendo's biggest threat is the Legion Go. I recently purchased this myself at a discounted price. 
Yeah, I've seen there's been some decent deals on the Legion Go, despite the fact it only just came out. But yeah, I'd say that and the ROG Ally and all those Windows handhelds, obviously the software, a bit clunky compared with Nintendo's super streamlined system. They certainly give you a lot more freedom to play whatever you like. And of course, I've been absolutely smashing through my Steam list of shame, thanks to them. And Joan says, if an OLED version doesn't launch, I'll just get a PS portal. I just want something handheld for the home. For now, for now. He does not roar, says, backwards compatibility is a make it or break it feature for me. I'm not buying anything from Nintendo again if they don't support Switch 1 games on the 2. I mean, yeah, they'd have to be super dumb not to include backwards compatibility for the Switch 1 on the Switch 2. Surely there's no reason on earth why they can't. Well, I'm pretty sure I said something very similar about the PSVR 2 and we all saw how that ended up. Nintendo is usually really good with the, the backwards compatibility stuff because I think like the Nintendo DS could play Game Boy Advance games which is fantastic. I think the Wii could play GameCube games right because I seem to recall I had more GameCube games than I did Wii games and I never owned a GameCube. The Pyman 66 says, Hi Mr. Spurt, I've read a rumour on the internet that claims you have three nipples but only ever use one. Is it true? Hang on a second, you, your username sounds suspiciously familiar. Aren't you the drop bear guy? Well, I'll have you know that rumour is completely false. I've actually got seven nipples and I alternate between them, one for each day of the week. Achilles3140 says, Mr. Mobile is indeed great, but you have your own Sunderland charm. It would actually probably make a fairly decent double act. You know, he could contribute all of the tech expertise and the wisdom and the high production values. And I'll just occasionally make a comment about a seven inch pocket rocket. Come to think of it, why do people actually watch my channel? Best not dwell on that one. Saturn Blue says, Uncle Spurt, can we get a Drop Bear Sock Puppet as a regular guest star? I mean, that would be a pretty great way of getting out of any awkward questions or anything. Basically, I just have the Drop Bear hoy himself onto my face. I go flying out of frame, cut to five minutes of complete silence until the video just suddenly stops. Bang out of time, kiddies. Better make this the last one for the week, but it looks like a good one. One Charlie Line 6 says, Just think it on Spurt, you can make your own game with the sole purpose of making James Corden cry, and you could call it What Makes Corden Cry. I'm really liking this idea, so I'm thinking for level one, for instance, we could recreate the hilarious prank where he dressed up as a giant rat, and went around harassing those poor f***ers stuck in LA gridlock by basically dry humping their cars and being James Corden's in their general vicinity. Except in the game version, of course, everyone in those cars is packing heat in their glove compartments, which they should have been in real life. Come on, LA, don't tell me the movies have been lying to me. We all know you're f***ing packing. And it basically turns into a giant Looney Tunes style rat hunt. And the problem is, while I used to be an IT spot back in the day, I haven't done any Java or anything for about two decades now, so I doubt I could even code a game of noughts and crosses. That certainly won't stop me from dreaming up more levels and stuff. Found my new happy place, I think. Anyway, massive thanks to everyone who commented last week. Lots of great stuff there. Sorry if you didn't quite get to yours, but please do smash down your comments in the comments area. Try and get away through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week. Next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? So this time next week, I will hopefully, if all goes well, be out in sunny Barcelona. Good bit of Mobile World Congress 2024 MWC, where you get lots of phones and other techie sh** launching. I'll probably spend the majority of it, as usual, quaffing Estrella dams and pissing off the locals with my frankly appalling combination of rubbish language skills and incomprehensible accent. But I am still planning on shooting uh, Techspert Weekly before I head out there, so hopefully no disruption there. And of course, stay tuned during MWC. I'll try and bring you some hot, friendly action with some of the biggest and best new tech. That is assuming that I don't get so utterly twatted that I just pass out and sleep through the entire thing. And heads up as well, I've been testing a couple of the new phones that will be launching out there ahead of the official launches, so I'll hopefully be bringing you a couple of full in-depth reviews as well. Anyway, that's enough of me banging on. Hope you guys have a fan-bloody-tastic weekend. And yeah, poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell for all that MWC jazz. I'll see you on the flip side. Cheers. Love you.